Alright you guys back here with another video and it's been a menace I did a talking head video but today we are P-U-T-R that means plus ultra trip ready and the reason we're P-U-T-R is because we're about to go on a little staycation going on a cabin trip going somewhere out by West Virginia somewhere just to do a little creator thing a little mind reset just just to chill and catch a couple vibes you know so we already got packed ready to go so now I gotta just load the car up and uh we'll be on our way all right you guys we are here we have arrived to the wilderness um it's a long drive about three hours pretty tired um actually not even my first day here first day i got here was like pitch black like just the dead of night i couldn't see shit so i was like mm, we're not going to record because it looks like a horror movie out here but today is day four out of six so i'm gonna show you around the cabin a little bit I'll let you know what i've been going through because it's it's been a lot it's been a lot going on up here didn't expect to be going through as much as i have been up here but uh we are uh yeah, we're here. So, yeah, let's get into it. interesting I got here like 7 30 ish at night pitch black absolutely no light I don't know maybe that's what inspired me using this offsetting light pattern to talk to you guys even though I really shouldn't be but that doesn't matter I got here day one it's pitch black so I'm already scared shitless I'm like I don't know what's going on I don't know why there's not a single beam of light, a night light, a fucking dragonfly, or it's a, a ladybug that lights up or something. It's just pitch black. I get to the house, the house is pitch black. So I get inside here and I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm gonna be in for a long week. Get inside, don't even take all my stuff in because I'm just like, you know what? Ain't no animal gonna catch me lagging. Ain't no, no serial killer gonna catch me lagging either. So what I decided to do was bring my suitcase in, bring my work equipment in, and bring my camera in. Cause those are my most expensive items and those are the things I need the most. So I'll bring those in, go to sleep. And before I get to sleep actually, I'm like, you know what? Let me just go check this hot tub out. I'll go out cause there's a back door to my room. And I'm like, let me check this hot tub out. I get to the back room. This door is just open. Not only is it open, it's unlocked. I'm up here just like, I'm, I'm going to die, aren't I? I'm, I'm going to die. I, I literally go to the outside, check it. It's one of those locks where the bottom lock is always unlocking from the inside, but it locks from the outside. But when you close it, you can just push it and it opens. So whether it's locked or not, you can always open it. So the first night I was stuck in pitch black darkness and my back door was just open, which leads to my room, which leads to the patio, which leads to the front door. So anybody could just walk in if they wanted to. I'm over here calling Airbnb support. I'm over here texting the host. I'm like, yo, like, this door not working. And I'm over here just playing phone tag with Airbnb support. They're like, are, are you good? I'm like, hell no, I'm not good. I'm over here in a fucking horror movie. Like, what do you mean am I good? Like, I wouldn't contact you if I was good. So I'm over here till like six o'clock in the morning until the sun comes up and that's when I finally go to sleep because I'm just on high alert. I don't know what to do. So that's day one. Let's check out the rest of the villain though before I go and talk about day two. explore the magical world of what is this cabin right it's nice got a jetted tub it's heated by the way it's got like hundreds of little jets inside of it. it's very nice that always stays heated 
No rain headed shower. I think it's a hot and cold shower. Obviously, I'm not going to use cold water. It's 40 degrees outside. And if it was 140 degrees outside, I would use cold water. But that's been pretty nice. Um, appliances work. That heater definitely worked when it's on. But day two, right? Day two. It's been something going on. It's been one bird that's just been, that's just been the biggest op since I've been here. It just be one bird, just always be looking at me and just be bothering me. It just be just tweaking for no reason. Tweaking. Shut up, bro. Anywho, so day two. So they come and they fix the door. So I'm very appreciative about that because I didn't sleep the first night. I was very pissed off. Did not sleep the first night. Was tired, exhausted. It just overall stressed. Because if you can see this behind me, um, it's very nice during the daytime. But in the next hour or so, when the sun goes down, you cannot see past your hand. Like if you put your hand like up to the camera, you can't see this far away at all. Like that's how pitch black it gets out here. So imagine hearing all these sounds at night and your door doesn't close. So I'm just a little frustrated. I will say the saving grace though, was that the host, as soon as he woke up, was messaging me. He had stuff to do, but as soon as he had time, he came over, fixed the door, chopped it up. It's very nice. Um, there were some batteries missing inside of the, the fireplace because it's an electronic fireplace, but he went and got that for me, even though he didn't have to. Um, granted, it probably should have been stocked anyways, but either way, it was still a nice gesture. It was nice. He went to do it. You know, gave me instructions on how to use the fire pit, which we'll use that probably in a later video, probably in the next part of this video whenever that comes out. Um, but it's been pretty nice. You know, day two was a lot better than day one. Still very stressed out, super fucking dark out here. So when I get stressed and I get on edge, I'm stressed and on edge. You just hear different sounds than what you hear back at home, right? You don't hear the same sounds that you hear in like a woods area or a nature-esque area back home. It's straight woods, mountains, and hills out here. So they got they got creepy noises times, times 11 out here, you know? So that's day two. Um... I didn't get to film on day one because of all the situation that I talked about the first time. Day two, I didn't film because I was just tired, had a lot going on, I was stressed. But oh, day three, let's talk about day three. <laughs> day three. Oh yeah, day three. <laughs> day three. All right, it's day one, day two in the books already, right? Day three, I'm like, all right, this is gonna be a cool day. It's gonna be a cool day. I'm gonna go to the hot tub, I'm gonna go rock this fire pit out. It's gonna be a very, very pleasant day. I go through my day, tired as all ever, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take a nap because I haven't slept the last two days because shit just been going on. Oh, and also, by the way, when I woke up Wednesday morning, I realized that the second night, Tuesday night, I had left the front door unlocked somehow. I have no idea how that happened, but the, fr the front door was unlocked all night. So now I've had the first and second night where I've had two nights well, my door has just been unlocked and I've just been hearing the craziest of sounds. And the sounds that I'm hearing, it sounded like people are trying to walk inside here or people are trying to open the door at night. It's weird. Cause it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but that's exactly what it sounds like. And it just has me on edge, but I'm not as on edge now because I have protection devices for me now. Um, but we'll talk about that later as well. So day three, I take a nap, I get up, I feel a little bit better because I've woken up a little bit, had myself a nap, I'm feeling very groggy, but I'm feeling overall just much better. So I started to get to work on trying to do some, some camera stuff, take some pictures, maybe do some videos, work on this vlog. And then I get a call from my father. After I speak to him for a little while, uh, I'm, I'm done with the call. And all of a sudden I just hear it starts to feel super windy. Like it's windy beyond belief. Like the trees are just like slamming back and forth. Like the little wiggle things at the car dealership. Like them things is moving. Like them things is really thanging. And the wind is just like smacking my building. It's just smacking this house like crazy. And I'm just like, bruh, now I can't go outside and film. That was really my first priority was go outside and film. But I couldn't do that. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Then my lights cut off and back on for a second. I'm like, dang, stuff cuts out. And then five minutes later, power just shuts out. I'm just like, ain't no way. Ain't no way. And at this point, it's 445 exactly when the lights shut off. All the power shuts off right at 445. Luckily, it starts getting a little bit darker. So I got dark in sunset at six o'clock. So for the first hour, I kind of like doze back off to sleep because I'm like, well, 
I can't do any more work for my nine to five and I can't do any of my camera stuff right now. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna take another nap real quick then. So I wake back up at like six ish, you know, sun's starting to go down. You know, it takes about like 30, 45 minutes for the sun to really just be like dark. It's in that phase where it's just like straggling along. So it was getting darker and darker. I could still see outside, so that's a good sign. Then seven hits, now it's pitch black outside. And I'm like, all right, bet. I try to go turn lights on, try to turn fireplace on, just thinking that everything gonna be fine. Power's still out. And I'm just like, okay. So I'm just sitting here in just pitch black darkness. And uh, mind you, there's no service up here. So service is just spotty in and out. Luckily I get one bar that goes in and out so eight o'clock hits, still no power. Nine o'clock hits, still no power. So now I'm tripping because now I'm like, it's dark as hell. I got no service. I got no Wi-Fi. I have no idea what's going on. And I'm just shook. I'm like, why does stuff just keep happening while I'm up here? That's just a sign that I don't need to be in the mountains. Mind you, I'm here by myself. I don't know if I said that or not, but I'm here by myself. So I'm tripping. And then I'm getting mad because I brought all these groceries up here. So I'm like, damn, stuff's been, you know, out of power for like four or five hours. It's now going on 930. You know, what's going on with my groceries and stuff like that? But I don't go check because it's pitch black. There's a light inside the refrigerator, so I can't see nothing. I'm like, you know what? I'm pissed off. I'm gonna go take myself a bath. But I'm like, hmm, I don't know if they have a hot water heater that's electric or not. Because if you have an electric water heater, that's what heats the water. There's probably some hot water in reserve, but I don't want it to be stuck there in the pitch black and can't see nothing. So I'm like, I'm just literally just sitting here just like, just, just staring into the darkness. So for whatever reason, I just decided to open a window. I just opened the window. I'm just hearing the sounds from outside. And somehow, in the midst of all this stuff that's happened and dealing with that and the power being out, it somehow made me very, very calm. I don't know how, but it made me very calm. It made me very on the edge at the same time because the noise just kept being crazy. I just kept hearing <laughs> and just hearing just wild ass noise. And I'm just like, hey, yo, this not it. So uh, that's day three. Now we're here today, which is day four. So yeah guys, day four. Day four was an interesting one. I went and took a bath. I saw a big roach the size of South Dakota. I don't even know what South Dakota looks like geographically on the map. I've never even you said that state before in my life, but I just know South Dakota in my mind is a big state and that's how big that roach was. So I saw a big old roach. I found the firewood for the cabin. <laughs> Didn't have an ax. I was told I was supposed to have an ax to chop my own firewood, which I was expecting to have so I could feel like John Rodcorn, but it's all good. Um, what else? I went into town for the first time, got myself a case of water, because I literally had no water. I've started boiling my own water since I've been here, and I don't know who the fuck I thought I was. I thought I was an industrialist or Christopher Columbus or some type of indigenous just renovator or something like that. I, I don't know, but the boiling water wasn't it. it. It was tasting crazy. So I had to get some spring water. Got in a hot tub for the first time. I'm so glad I did that because I got to watch a beautiful sunset, enjoy the vibes and just relax, which was the whole reason for me to come out here, which is to catch a vibe, be one with nature, be more present and centered with myself. Now, I do think that this is something that everybody should do at some point in their life, if not once a year, every few years. Just take a time to just reset, you know? Get yourself out of that routine of everything that you're doing with day-to-day -day life and just put yourself in a totally different environment and just be present. It does so many wonders for the mind. I had so many humbling experiences since I've been here with the power going out, a huge windstorm, like I said, my back door being unlocked, front door being unlocked, and just service just not being good at all out here, so I just have no way to contact people most of the time. It's really humbled me in a way of, one, realizing that I am not an outdoors person at all, but the more I stay out here and the longer I am out here, the more appreciative I am of it because of the fact that 
I do get to get away from the social media. I do get away from the toxicity of back home. I get to sit around a campfire, you know, sit around water, just listening to the trees, the different sounds that nature makes in the dead of the woods during the day and at night. It just have appreciation of just the little things, which being out in something like this will really humble you and make you do. Not to mention the fact that I'm always on edge because of the fact that there's always just the craziest sounds. They sound like nothing I've heard of before, even though I do have family that lives nature-esque-ish, but nobody that literally lives in the woods. Like, that's, that's some crazy stuff. But, you know, it's been a really cool experience. Um, I don't know if I'll come back here, though, to be honest. It's just because the sounds that this place makes at night, it just sounds like somebody's always walking into my house. Literally, it sounds like somebody's walking through the door like 15 times every hour and it just has me on edge because like I said, I don't have that ax. So that was what I was going to use to protect myself and I'd be hip, span and duty, whatever, whatever term that you can just make up. So I'd be feeling great if I had that ax. You know, I have a propane tank. You know, that's my nuclear option. If shit goes south, uh, I'm going to have to get a hand towel, this propane tank and this lighter, and then, um, you know, set it off like Queen Latifah in here. But, you know, that's the nuclear option. I'd rather not do that. Um, so, for those reasons, I probably won't be back. And I probably won't be back by myself. Because, again, like I said, being out by yourself is one thing. Being in the woods by yourself is one thing. Not having service is one thing. But all three of those things, that's a lot of things. You know, you don't want to deal with all three of those things happening. And not to mention, there's not one single light out here. I actually found one single light, actually. It's like, I think it's a motion sensor light, like a tenth of a mile ahead of the driveway. But that's like the only light over here. So when it's dark, it's dark. Like, it's just black outside. So all the sounds I'm hearing, I can't go out my window and look and see anything. It's just darkness. It's like I'm closing my eyes very, very long. And it's just, it's not a good feeling. And, you know, I'm, I'm not with that. So that's pretty much my two cents. Appreciative of it. You know, I wouldn't be back. Got myself a nice fire, though, while I'm here. You know, that's a great fire. You know, it took me a long time to put this fire together. I'm very good at putting fires together. But for whatever reason, this would not catch and it would not stay, even though I have it like in a nice pyramid style scheme, you know, a nice vector scheme, you know, but it's just not working. Not sure why. Once I decided to give up, and I've already recorded this once, I was like, you know what, F it. But then it finally started to take when I was breaking down. I'm like, you know what, let me try this one more time. So here we are with the fire. Maybe I am John Rodcorn, you know? Maybe I am. <laughs> I feel like I am because that's a great fire. You know, who, who do you know who's putting out, putting fires up like this? Nobody. You know, nobody put a fire up like this. Like, look at this. Got my signature in here. You know? But I digress. So, that's everything I have for here. Oh, but we do have to talk about day five. So, with day five. All right, guys, day five is in the books. It's pouring down rain outside, and I just feel like I've been on 15 ever since I've been here, primarily because of sleep deprivation and because of the fact I'm going to bed at like three, four o'clock in the morning every single day. But for the last 32 hours, somehow I've just felt really productive, which has been really good for my self-esteem and my mental health. Um, it started off today, at least, with me going to the NBA and having a pleasant exchange with one of the tellers. So that my license was about to expire and she was like oh baby that's no problem my license expired before and i've driven to work here at the mva and i'm over here just like all right touche but after that pleasant exchange i came home and saw a lot of scenic views on the way back from the countryside i saw a lot of lakes ravines old timely shops mountains and just a lot of different landscapes that i just haven't seen since i've been to west virginia because of the fact that i'm just so fearful of leaving this cabin Right. Generally, when I go on vacation, I frequent Latin American countries because I A, love the water, B, love pina coladas, and C, love tostones. But for this trip, I chose to do none of those things and do a complete 180, primarily because I wanted to see new things, be around different people, and just overall get a more appreciation of nature, um, which I did about 10% of the last thing and pretty much nothing else. Um, this particular place here has been interesting in the fact that 
Every time I go to sleep, I feel like the Flying Dutchman is gonna creep up and take me from the backside, both figuratively and literally. Um, so I probably won't come back to this particular place because of the fact that I feel like I'm having an out of body experience every time I get up to go to the bathroom. But I probably would try this again, you know, with more people around potentially or in a less remote environment. So that way, if the power does go out and I have the Flying Dutchman come grab me and take me into the abyss, I can at least send out an SOS text or send my location to somebody. I feel, more, I feel a lot more comfortable in that state. Sorry, my phone's blowing up. Um, like it's a life alert. And the reason it's blowing up is because it's midnight. And because it's midnight, it's March 2nd. And this is a significant milestone for me because today is my 28th birthday. And I'm so appreciative. I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm just so thankful because I was at a point a few years ago, where I just didn't want to be alive. Just wasn't appreciative of life. And I just overall just didn't care about my birthday. But the older I've gotten, the more life I've experienced, the trials and tribulations I've gone through and overcome. It just really make me value every minute, every day, every second, because those things are not promised. And if you're able to go through this world 365 days a year in this big blue marble and make it out on the other side, that deserves to be celebrated. So happy birthday to you whenever your birthday is. Today is mine, so I'm gonna celebrate my birthday self self selfishly. Can't even get the word out because I actually feel really excited about it. And we're gonna make it a good day. I'm gonna make it a real good day. I'm probably gonna get myself in the soaking tub for a little bit because of the fact that I have to check out first thing in the morning and I don't know what packing get out of here is gonna look like in a timely manner. So I'm gonna go do that and then we're gonna figure out how to do day six. There are a bunch of just uncanny birds just flying around my head. But welcome to day six, guys. Excited because today's outro, finally leaving West Virginia and returning home. Can celebrate my birthday with my loved ones. Last night, similar to every other night, I had the boogeyman scratching and clawing at my door, making indescribable noises. So as usual, I was not able to sleep. And my anxiety and just sleep deprivation is just on 35 this morning. But it's cool because I decided to get back in the hot tub again real quick, put this thing up to like 105 degrees, and just sit here and soak for the remaining time that I have before I have to really force myself out of here and head home. So this is gonna be pretty much the end of the vlog where I cut it off. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I'll probably do more vlogs like this in the future when I start traveling more again. But until next time, guys, peace.